Yes, guys, Adam and Eve, you are here in the Garden of Eden. I'm about to let you in. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. What's up, Mobu High Squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Good morning, guys. Welcome to another vlog here at the Mabu High Squad farmhouse. I'm Mikey Bustos, and uh, yeah, you guys are my best friends. Welcome to another vlog. I'm just letting the dogs out. By the way, guys, this here is the Mabu High Squad farmhouse. There's the pool. This is a home my partner and I built in the countryside of the Philippines, a province called Cavite, and it's coming to its final stages now. Anyways, as I said, I am going to let the dogs out, run around the yard. Initially, we used to have a lot of workers working on stuff, so we couldn't let the dogs out because the workers had to go in and out of the, that gate there, and we didn't want the dogs distracting the workers. But now that there are less workers, free roam for the dogs. That's Rizal, our giant poodle, and Brittany, our Mexican hairless. Now in a previous vlog, or our last vlog, you saw that I bought like these things. This is just an experiment. These are, well, like woven nest boxes that are normally sold for lovebirds, for pet lovebirds uh, to nest. But I feel like these would offer some great nesting places for wild birds. Um, and I wanted to put one of these here, um, maybe here, and see if it actually works at like providing birds a nest. Because if it does, I'm going to buy more of these. All right. So maybe I'll just stick this right here or here. It's got a little bit of a... Dun, 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 dun. So easy. All right, let's further secure it back here on this end. By the way, guys, this is the dog run. See, our dogs have some cool hangout places here. They just hang out here during the day. Uh, they sleep normally either with us or in the staff house, which is way down there. And uh, there's a bathing area here. Our dogs have a fan, um, feeding area and bed. Towel and like, shampoos and brushes and stuff it's really really cute place this is our happy place when we have like guests and stuff um we'll often put the dogs here especially if they themselves bring their dogs because we just don't want any problems but all right there the nest is fixated yay and i think the vines will like help obscure it and cover it that's a really cool place for a nest no and we can see it from here. You can just come out and watch from afar. It'll be cute. And let's hope some birds nest in it, Mabu High Squad. I hope so. My prediction is in a few days, some birds will find it. Like I find birds around here are always on the prowl for like holes and cavities to build their nests. Oh, and look, yay. Our bird of paradise is starting to flower. How beautiful. Oh, and guys, look, there are ants that are drinking, I guess, from the sweet goodies that the flower offers. Those are fire ants, though. I'm not going to touch them. This here is our calamansi plant. See? Calamansi is a citrus that we pick and we, like, squeeze into all our cuisine here in the Philippines. This kind is a variegated kind, so it's, like, got some yellows in it, which is different because usually it's all green. There's RJ <laughs> way down there. <laughs> Look at Rizal just licking him. This space here has really become our little corner of paradise. I'm so happy at, and grateful at like how it's come together over time. For those of you who've been following our vlogs, which upload usually three times a week, you guys know the struggles it took to get here. It's been a long, long journey, guys. And if you don't believe me, just go back to some of the vlogs like, I don't know, last year. You'll see, <laughs> it looked nothing like this. It's been such a gradual, slow crawl to the finish line uh, for building our dream farmhouse here. Hey, Brittany. So this pool here, as I mentioned in previous vlogs, has somehow attracted wildlife to the property, um, especially birds. Like now I'm seeing all kinds of birds I have never seen before. Hearing new bird noises and bird songs 
that never heard before, and some of you Mabu High Squad, like Glenn Bags, uh, who are bird experts, you guys are leaving comments saying, oh, that bird at this timestamp is this kind of bird. And, I'm, and I look it up on Google and I'm like, wow, we have those here? It's really fantastic. So I do know that birds are starting to come around and I do believe it's because of the pool. I don't know what it is. Is it because the birds drink from the pool? Not sure. Uh, the pool is a freshwater pool, so it's safe for them to drink. Or maybe they're flying overhead and they're like, oh, look, a pond. There must be lots of bugs and, and food here uh, for, the, you know, for these birds. So they decide to fly down and like nest all around. That is why I'm installing more of those nest boxes. And I'm gonna look for some nest boxes of different sizes and shapes to see which ones, you know, work the best. The dogs really love the outdoor furniture. Look at you, Brittany. Yes, you love this couch, huh? This here is outdoor furniture. I say outdoor furniture because it's built for being outside. This here is made of like, I don't know what it is. It's some waterproof material. And then this part here is built to dry faster than like normal fabric in case it rains. Right, Brittany? Mm -hmm. This here is another nest. Again, built for pet birds. Um, but I think I could probably fixate this perhaps up there in that little nook there where the branches split. Um, I could have it like fixated up there maybe up there um, we'll see but I think I want to varnish this first just so it's like protected because the wood is just really raw and termites will eat it and the weather will like wear it apart so I'm gonna varnish it first and then uh, stick it up there here are the iguanas Adam and Eve they're so healthy hi guys now um, these iguanas apparently are ready to move to their new home your new home is ready. They have really grown in size, guys. Like, they are much bigger than when they first arrived a few months ago. And they've really tamed up, too. <laughs> you guys are so easy to care for. Whoa! I love watching the dogs play. <laughs> These two are best friends. So, as you might have seen in a previous vlog, there already is... A bird nest here we discovered it I don't want to get too close there are these little tiny black birds that um... guys get out of there out out <laughs> see them uh, oh and I think I see okay there is a bird inside see it see the birds beak it's in there and there were eggs, I'm not sure if they've hatched, but the cutest birds ever. You see? So the birds are just coming around and they're just nesting. It's really beautiful. It's good to have wild birds and support wildlife in your area. Um, it's good for the environment, right? Good for the ecosystem. Because when humans build homes and neighborhoods, uh, even farmland into wild spaces, the birds have less places to nest. Uh, and so my dream for this place was to be not seamless by being around but you know allowing the wild animals to also live here because they they lived here first okay the little rascals are out peeing <laughs> and look look at the progress Brittany and Cypher together um, for those of you who are new Brittany here almost fatally attacked Cypher um, and it was our mistake. One, we hadn't spayed Brittany. We'd left her too long intact. And two, we left toys out. Like my whole life I thought you were supposed to just leave toys out for the dogs so that they would, you know, play when they get bored. Um, but apparently no. And strangely, this is news to me and I've had mixed uh, packs before, like growing up. And my dogs never fought over, over toys. Like, yeah, they would growl and they would squabble, but the fight between these two was, well, it was scary. Um, but look, the progress now. See, they're together. We no longer leave toys out. We no longer leave food out. Um, and then Brittany was enrolled in five, uh, 
weeks or six weeks of obedience training. So she's got the basics down as well. Yeah, we're a happy pack again. Right, Sipes? Hey guys, just got back from the gym. I'm uh, currently in cutting season, so I'm still quite lean. Ah, but man, the workouts are getting harder and harder when you're lean. <laughs> harder and harder. Guys, guys, there's Melody. Hi, Melody. Hey, Sipes. We're trying to let the dogs get used to Melody because as you saw in the last vlog, we're kind of adopting her. Hi, Melody. How are you? Be nice, Cypher. Be nice, Cypher. Be good. She's our friend. She's our friend. Be nice, Sahara. And um, as you saw in the last vlog, she recently lost her kittens. Hey! Hey, Cypher, no! Let her sleep. It's okay. It's okay. Melody's our friend. Anyways, as I said before, in the last vlog, we discovered that she lost her kittens. She literally gave birth. And then like a couple days later, we discovered that three of her kittens were missing and three dead and completely killed by huge gashes in their neck. So we don't know who did it. Um, our guess was rats, like giant rats. But some of you guys said in the comments that it could be Melody that killed the kittens because cats are, are known to kill their kittens. We're not sure. Some of you suggested she probably saved her last three kittens and hid them somewhere else. We don't know. But this whole tragedy really struck me and affected me deeply. And we've decided we're going to keep her as like our farm cat. So we're feeding her proper kitten f cat food. We're going to spay her and uh, just give her all she needs because we want her to stay here. Because if we get rid of her, other cats might move in for sure. And... Um, they might not be as friendly as Melody is here. Like, she's so kind. So if she can keep other cats away, we don't mind her sticking around, because she's cool. Melody, I'm so sorry about your kittens. Cypher, be good. Sorry, Melody. I'm sorry. Sorry about what happened. See, the dogs are now, they know she's a friend. She's just a friend. She's our friend. Okay, Cypher? We're also going to deworm her and, like, Auntie tick and flee her. You're part of the family now, okay, Melody? Don't be afraid of these dogs. Just be sure to let them know when they're too close. Cypher's so confused. He spent like months barking at her through the window or through the glass door. And now he's like, wait, so she's our friend? She's a friend? Yes, she is, Cypher. This is Melody. It's a cat. It's a cat. This is a cat. Good girl. Good girl, Melody. Good girl. Sorry about what happened to your kittens, Melody. Yes, you're a good girl. Mm -hmm. And it's been a long time coming with this cat. Like, I think this is the cat we saw growing up before we even moved here. Like, she would just live inside our house, you know, um, before there were even glass doors or anything. And she'd always look at us coming in like, what are you doing in, our, in my home? As she got older, you know, and she was living outside, I would like cringe every time she would try to come and snuggle next to my leg because I didn't want like fleas and like disease and parasites on me and stuff because that's kind of like the reputation here. But then somehow she just made her way into our hearts. <laughs> and like this recent tragedy just solidified in my mind that, you know what, this girl's one of us. What do you think, Mabu High Squad? But I'm glad the dogs are starting to realize, okay, this is a friend. That's Melody. Melody. Yes, she's our friend. She's our, uh, Sives. She's our friend. Oh, RJ bought something for Rizal. Oh, it's an elevated bowl. Oh, that's cool. And then, what is this? Oh, I see. So, uh, it keeps the water clean. So you, it floats at the top and then it slowly sinks. Okay, I get it. And then this kind of goes, oh, that's cool. I like that. What a cool invention. Okay, but how do I take it out now? See, I guess this is a floater. And then just the top of the water gets exposed and then the rest kind of is covered. So leaves and stuff don't fall in. Oh, what a cool invention. Uh, and also it ensures, I guess, water doesn't evaporate much i don't know that's cool love it elevated pet bowls 
Guys, it's missing a part, this part. It's designed for slow eating so that the, it avoids choking. This. Guys, look, once in a while, I'll notice that the birds are actually playing with the toys. They get bored with playing with the bamboo and destroying the bamboo and they actually work on the toys. Love it. I'm gonna start hanging more toys around and see it warm up to playing with toys again because they naturally will just prefer living plants. Hi. Hi. Hi guys. This here is the aviary by the way. It's meshed at the top. Oh, there's a piece of metal up there that needs to be removed. But um, I love coming here every day and just hanging out with my birds. If you're new, I have three blue-naped parrots, which are naturally native to the Philippines. And I have three crimson-bellied conures. Come, uh, right there. See, and up there. Naturally native to South America, but are, um, I believe, endangered in their native range. But all these birds have been captive bred and raised uh, here in the Philippines and I have permits for all of them. All right guys, so now I'm gonna put on some sun sunscreen because I'm gonna be outside for a bit. I want to start decorating the iguana's pen, the new iguana's cage, and uh, hopefully move the iguanas in. So I'm going to prepare to go outside. I've ran out of my usual like facial sunscreen, but I have this, a sunblock that's natural and organic, 30 SPF. So for now, I'm just gonna use this. First, what I do is, by the way, if you live in the Philippines in the tropics, you need to put on sunscreen. Actually, no matter where you live, you should. First things first, I put it on my eyebrows. You know why? Because I've had microblading, which are basically eyebrow tattoos, makes your eyebrows darker. Don't ask. Um, but, um, to keep it from fading, you should protect it from sunlight. Then I go like this, and then I look weird. You see, I look like a Klingon. But don't worry, it'll go away. I love this sunscreen. I have another one, as I said before, from my friend Doc Jella. I just need, I ran out. I need to get more. So yeah, at first you look like a ghost, like this. You look like you're from, you're a zombie. Nice and fair skin. I wish my skin was this color. My mom would be like, wow, you're so guapo. That's an Asian joke, by the way. Here in Asia, they love light skin. They love it. Which is funny, because in North America, it's the opposite. Everyone tries to get dark and tanned. Like RJ skin, you know RJ skin? Like pure white, like almost blue white. That's what's popular. All the stars are that color. All right. So I got all the protection. I'm gonna put it on my ears. There we go. Now I'm just gonna let this dry and go out in the sun. Maybe, might even go for a swim. We'll see. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Yes, okay, now we're ready. By the way, speaking of eyebrow tattoos, also known as microblading, uh, I get mine done at a place called Brusco Brows in BGC. You should go check them out if you're a guy and you would like to elevate your eyebrow game. It, I don't know, for some reason it just like makes your, it frames your face and like makes you look more, I don't know, masculine? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the science is behind it, but I, it like in pictures and in video before I used to get this, like my eyebrows would dis disappear and I would look like an alien. I still look like an alien, but now I have eyebrows. All right, iguanas, I'm going to try my best to make you guys the most epic iguana enclosure ever. I'll be back. All right, so the iguana enclosure is just down there. We're heading there now. Um, it's in the lower portion of the property. It also happens to face the same way that the iguana's enclosure faces, which is this way. Perfect, because the sun rises there, so they'll get some good morning sun. But it also has ample shade, which is good. Like right now, the iguanas are in the shade. They like it that way. As long as they get morning sun, they're fine here too. Uh, the sun during the day here in the Philippines can be a little too much. So morning sun for the iguanas and for all reptiles really is ideal. The mornings is usually when, you know, the snakes come out and they bask 
all the reptiles and stuff, the lizards, that's when they bask. Um, but then by afternoon, they kind of like retreat into the shadows where it's cooler. All right, so this here is the iguana enclosure. It's around three times the size as the enclosure the iguanas are in now. And now I've just got to decorate it. Okay, first things first, I got to get these sticks out of here. That's that's what I'm going to use. How do I get down here? This is an adventure. Okay. Whoa. I should probably get help. Wow guys, the bougainvillea is really growing now. There's a lot of it. There's RJ up there. All right, let's decorate. All right guys, and that is the final configuration. Uh, and the branches are locked into place wedged between spaces within the rocks and within the bars and the iguanas are ready to move in i actually don't need those sticks down there but i've just put them there for decor see let's move in this is stable i know it wobbles but that's okay it's stable it will not fall it can't like it can't possibly move and it locks the other branches in place and the enclosure is still spacious enough for us to get in and clean as needed, feed as needed, and the iguanas have lots of basking space here. All right guys, let's get the lizards. But wait, one thing we need to do first and foremost is fill the pool area. Let's fill this up. It's gonna take a little bit. All right, so while this continues to fill up, um, I wanted to show you how this works. So we have a drain here so any poo and waste can be washed down this drain or it can be washed kind of outside of the cage, become part of the soil. However, most of the time the iguanas poo when they're bathing, like when they're soaking in water. Um, it just makes cleaning so much easier. So we've made sure that this drain can be drained. So I just pull this and it goes down the drain to like our septic tank it's really awesome um, and then we could just fill it up again and this water feature here is like much more water than they had when they were living in here um, so here's the iguana pen and as a size comparison I'll show you how much more space they have you see that's a lot of space and then keep in mind this is twice as deep as this cage it's about about twice or a little bit more than twice as deep so they have a lot of room in here and the iguanas are like freaking out they're like where are we we're in a new spot yes guys adam and eve you are here in the garden of eden i'm about to let you in all right guys so this is the real test and i have to remove you guys and this might be uncomfortable don't be afraid Come, come, come. Come, come. It's okay. It's okay. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Go. Be free. Be free. Here's the big boy. Okay. 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 Relax. Take a breather. Guys, I'm gonna need gloves. Eve is in there. She's liking it so far. She's just exploring, but he's a little skittish. Um, I'm gonna need gloves because their claws are sharp and I don't want him to like cut me. 
Now I am watching Eve explore her new enclosure and it is so fascinating. She's trying to bite at things. <laughs> She's sniffing things with her tongue. A lot of people assume that iguanas are strictly arboreal, like they just stay up in the trees, but this is not true. Uh, when I was in Mexico, the green iguanas would come to ground level often to forage for food and stuff. Um, look, she's trying to eat like fallen leaves. Uh, and so this bottom portion is great for them to, you know, come down and explore all around. I gotta keep an eye on her. Don't you dare open that door. Um, as for the male, I'm trying to wait till Adam kind of calms down. Um, and I'm gonna take him out with some gloves because he's gonna struggle. And those nails, I'm telling you. Okay, I'm just gonna wait till he comes out on his own and then I'm gonna grab him. He's currently on the ground. You can go this way. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, did it! Did it! Oh, thank goodness for gloves. But, there they are. There's Eve and there's Adam. Adam's like, oh, what is this? Yep, feel free to swirl around in the pool. You can poo in there as you please. Feel free to climb all of these awesome branches, get the altitude you love, and feel free to explore. Oh, look at her displaying already. See, that's her asserting dominance. Mubuhai squad, let's join them and lock myself in here too with them. Ooh. I get to actually be with the iguanas, which is different. No longer separated by bars. Hi, Adam. Here, this is their food bowl. I'll put that right here. Yes, you like it here, huh? Oh, I love being here with you. There's Eve, still exploring the enclosure. See, they've got a lot of room in here. This is the most space they've known. Adam, look. You got your own pond. See, you got your own pond. You're so beautiful, it's so good to see you, not having to look through the bars. You're gonna climb the branches? Go. Wow, look at Eve, she's not afraid to come up to me. It's so good to hang out with you guys, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is different, yep. Go explore, go explore Adam, feel free. This is your new home now. Oh guys, it is so different, hanging out with the iguanas this way. You gonna swim? Go, swim. She's gonna go up here, I think. You wanna swim? Look. You can get wet, cool off. It's awesome, all for you. Wow. Look at Adam just totally smelling the area. So in case you're new to iguanas, they smell using their tongue. They're like snakes. And you know what, guys? You will get some amazing morning sun here. Mm-hmm. Let me bathe ya. See? Refreshing? Is it refreshing, Eve? <laughs> there you go. I think the iguanas are also pretty fascinated at the new view that they have here. This is a different view from what they've been used to. You like it? I hope so. We made it just for you. Can I touch your... <laughs> She's gonna go join Adam way down there. Let's see how they interact. Just amazing. Iguanas are crazy. Oh, he's displaying to her. He's like, this is my space. Oh, so good. So, so good. All right, guys, I'll let you explore your split your space alone. Hope you enjoy and like your new home, okay? See ya. I realized that this also is a good way to bond, to tame them because I could literally just sit inside with the iguanas, which I couldn't do when they were living inside the cage. So this is good. And look, look at the space they have. Yay. That is a lot of space. Iguanas can grow up to six feet long. So, I mean, when they do get to a large, large size, eventually they'll outgrow this and we'll build them another outdoor pen. But for the meantime, this is more than enough space for them. I could probably even add in another iguana if I wanted, perhaps another female, but I've wanted a blue iguana. 
or a red iguana? What do you think? So cool. It's so cool. Oh my gosh, cool. Climb, climb, my dragons, climb. Enjoy your new lair, my dragons, beloved dinosaurs. Guys, I love it. Why do I love animals so much? I don't understand. It's just the best. And wow, I am so not used to the space being so open. See? So open now. I'm actually gonna miss seeing the iguanas here every morning. But it does give me an excuse now to go down there every day to go hang out with them. But aw, uh, we'll surely miss them here. So along this path here, I can see that the jasmine vines or jasmine plants are blooming. And guys, it smells so good. Like, if only you could smell this. It makes this whole path smell so fragrant. Wow. All right, I'm back to see how the iguanas are doing. Looks like they're in the lower portion. Hey guys, how do you like your new home? Is it cool? Uh-oh. One thing I do notice though is no water, which means even when we plug it up, when we have it like plugged, it still leaks. So our other option is to add some kind of plug, like an actual bathtub plug over here. I think that's the only way. So guys, apparently our pond has a leak somewhere. So they have to repair that. That's going to be ongoing. Um, but meanwhile, look, the dragonflies are moving in. Awesome. Yay. Um, I'm going to start adding some fish in here too. Oh, look, there's more dragonflies. Sweet. Yay. Uh, and going to start stocking the pond now. I mean, with just little creatures to add some nitrogen in so that this can all start cycling. I can't wait to have this pond working officially. I do need to add some guppies in here though, uh, so it can start eating the mosquitoes. And guys, look, in the Bahai Kubo here, the traditional Filipino house, and they've installed glass. See, ooh, love it. So this glass allows us to look over the edge at the water fountain that will be here. This bottom has been completed, see? And another glass here. We wanted this to be kind of an observatory. We could just sit here and look at the forest. It's such a beautiful scenery to look at. And I bet if we just sat here, all kinds of birds would be flying by. Because we see them when we're in the pool. We see them flying by here all the time. It's the perfect backdrop for bird watching. Um, and so yeah, this platform we're not will probably extend out that way. Not sure yet, but I can't wait for this Bahai Kubo to be done officially. This Bahai Kubo has air conditioning. See that? Sliding cuppies doors. That shell. Uh, it's got mesh windows as well that can close. See? It's a really cute, cute place to stay. Um, and again, it's completely smart. So all the lights, you see, are controlled through here. And it emerges to a really nice view of the yard. Gosh, I love that the iguanas are there. And I love that they have more space to explore. I was starting to feel kind of bad for them living in this small cage. Like they were often going back and forth exploring. But here, they've got so much room now to do that. Like your new home, Adam? Hmm? Like it? <sighs> look at him, look at Adam. <laughs> I just love watching them. I know, the water disappeared. Don't worry, I'll fill it up again. They really look so much better in there. I could literally just sit here for hours and watch them. Now guys, about having guppies. So, Ate June and RJ decided to fill this with lotus and like a bunch of aquatic floating plants and some merged plants. And then I figured, okay, but the plants need nitrogen in it. So I added a community of guppies, which are in here somewhere in this black water. There, do you see them? They're right there. They're, they're hiding. Hold on. If you look carefully, let's see. Anyway, they're in here. And earlier I saw, oh, there. You see their like tails, like, there, do you see them? Let's see if I can get a better look. Wait, do you see them there? Wait, let's see if I can... You, you can see their tails. Anyway, um, I did see baby guppies. There, I see a baby right now. See that little 
That little, that little baby. They're breeding. Guppies breed like crazy. So their waste will create good plant food for uh, this lotus and um, and the floating plants. So it's a little it's a little system in here. You've got the fish creating waste and then the plants eating that waste. Um, and if the balance is correct, algae should not break out here. Oh, there's a there's an adult guppy. Do you see them? Gosh, it's hard. To, there, see them? See their tails? It's hard to see because it's focusing on on the reflection. But there are guppies in here, beautiful ones, and they're they're breeding. Woo! There, see them? See them in the, under the plants? They're gorgeous. And guys, there's a lot of life in here. See that aquatic snail? There. Right there. There's a snail in there. Oh, there are a lot of snails in here. I see one there, another right there. Oh, okay. There's one floating upside down right there. Okay. It must have come with the lotus. Anyway, the community that lives in here, that is what I'll probably use to seed the life in our pond. If you've been wondering what this basin is here, this is also more lotus and aquatic plants. We're just, they're just waiting to be transplanted now into our, uh, our pond. All right, guys, so here at the pool bar, love how RJ decorated this. And we finally have stairs, see, legit stairs. Pool is so placid at this time, see? Might get in the pool later, we'll see. All right, guys, yep, we're in the pool. There's RJ, <laughs> my hunk. Uh, we just turned on the waterfalls. They're coming out now, ooh, love it. You guys, this water though, ah, oh, it's so good. <sighs> love it. This is the perfect time to swim, cause like, sun isn't out, it's not beaming on you, um, but it's daytime. It's currently just after 5 p.m. And guys, let's swim. That's why we got this pool, right? I'm gonna swim there and swim back. Here we go. <gasps> Oh, it's so refreshing. Oh, look at my middle alfalfa part. <laughs> look at her. <laughs> but you're so handsome. You're like the most beautiful man I've ever seen. Seriously. Even without, like, he doesn't have to try. Uh, I'll try to swim. Okay, go. Go. Without touching the bottom. So RJ doesn't know how to swim, but look. He's totally doing it, not touching the bottom. Wow, good. That's good, man. That's very good. Did you run out of breath? No. Is that why you came up? No. Try to do the whole thing. <laughs> See, man? Swimming is easy. So RJ had a traumatic experience as a kid. What happened to you again? Yeah, I almost drowned. He almost drowned. He was catching tadpoles as a kid by a river. Uh, you know, there's like a lower part of a subdivision. Okay. I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was it flooded. Was flooded. And then and I you. I slid. He slid and then fell in the water. And who saved you? My cousin. He was able to grab my leg. Ah. My ankle. So, see, there was a traumatic event as a kid. So, he kind of is afraid of swimming, but he's doing well. Like, he's been working on it for ever since I've been with him. And now that we have a pool, he's got a safe space to do it. I've seen him progress to the point now where he's okay being underwater. Like, you, you gotta stay calm. I think a lot of people who don't know how to swim are afraid to go underwater because it's kind of scary down there. You don't hear anything. And like, obviously you can't breathe. But if you can go underwater and like open your eyes and look around, it's truly a magical world. So for those of you who are new, uh, this pool is a fresh water pool. It's no chlorine, so it's better for the health better for the environment and it's not salt water either um, it filters the water through ions 
uh, copper ions, so it releases these ions in the water, which makes it hard for bacteria to proliferate. So that's how it kills the bacteria. There also is a biological filter component to the filter there. And on top of that, there's like ultraviolet light that zaps like any living things in the water. Uh, so it's really cool. That freshwater filter mechanism runs for seven hours throughout a 24, 24 hour cycle. We've chosen for it to run through the night um, so that by the morning we have a freshly clean pool. And it's great, you can open your eyes underwater. Uh, my friends Byron say it like, it's just a different thing. Like if you happen to open your mouth underwater and kind of ingest some, it just tastes like fresh water. Um, and other animals can drink from it. Look at this. Oh, there's that huge bee. Never mind. A huge bee was drinking some of this water and it's okay. And you know what? It's really zen. I've been doing a lot of swimming since this pool was instated and it's helped my back. I've been able to do cardio without like, you know, the high impact because um, for those of you who don't know, in December I had a slip disc, herniated disc. What? Since when do I get injured? Yeah, so uh, I realized that I need to keep exercising and walking however I have to watch out with my back while it's healing. But ever since we got this pool, my back has felt amazing. I do feel like it's helping me heal. So for those of you who have back injuries, swimming is a good way, apparently. Guys, I'm watching the forest and the birds that fly by. Crazy. I'm also watching RJ, but mostly the forest. Honestly, like I just saw some yellow birds fly by orioles honestly i i could sit here all day and just watch the birds it's so placid here really really nice so guys i just got a message from the gang my high school friend byron and two friends ellis and nicole whom you guys know are uh, staying with us they're here for another week but uh they're currently in toron palawan and guys, they said they had a blast! I'm in the squad the sun has come out for us and we are about to go on the Kuron town tour and the view from our balcony is absolutely beautiful We got our drinks. What did you get, Ellis? I got orange juice. Cool. Go shake. Nice. Very and good. calamansi juice. Thank you. And this was recommended by our tour guide, the Grilled Kibau. Welcome back, guys. How was it? Oh, incredible. Yeah? Fun until 
<laughs> All right, guys. So the gang is back from Coron and gosh, it looks like they truly had an adventure. That is great. I'm happy when people visit it, visiting the Philippines have a good time in visiting here. And you know, our beaches are pretty much the best beaches in the world. If I do say so myself, and maybe I'm a bit biased, but it, they really are gorgeous. Time to check the iguanas. Let's see how our iguanas are doing. Okay, where are they? I don't see them. Oh, there they are. Hi, how is it? There's one down there and there's, hi. Adam is looking really big. Hi Adam, how are you liking your new home? Enjoying? Looks like they ate all of their breakfast. Good, how are things Eve? Eve's down here, just chilling. Hi Eve, hi. Oh man, they've turned on the waterfalls, yay. <gasps> so beautiful. I guess they patched up the leak? I don't know. But guys, look, the dragonflies are really coming around. I'm so happy about this. When we first visited this lot, like when this was all just wild field, there were a ton of dragonflies. So I'm happy to see them moving back. This is good. You know, I'm going to start populating this pond. Ooh, it's so peaceful. I love it, look. Let's go on this side. Oh. So pretty, gorgeous. So the water level will eventually rise to about there once it's completely full. Oh, it's so cute. This will definitely attract lots of wildlife. Yay, let's open and go inside. So nice, wow. Cool, native ants have moved in, yay. That's Diacama rugosum. Oh, blue bees! I see blue bees! Remember the blue bees from previous vlogs? See? Nice and blue. They're just all over these flowers. Oh, so cool! It's so good to see! And it's such a pretty sunken garden. It's gorgeous, gorgeous garden here. See that, guys? So pretty. Love it so much. And guys, I can't get over how cool it is down here, like temperature-wise, nice and cool. I would love to lay out some kind of hammock or seating area, area down here for those who just want to like appreciate the waterfall. So, so nice. Whoa, look at that. What is that? It's a huge, huge bee. Or no, that's a, that's a type of fly. I guess it's coming for a drink. Wait, I want to see what it sounds like from inside the Bahai Kubo. Is it too noisy? Oh my! Well, I can certainly hear the running water. But what if it's like closed? Oh, okay, yeah, that blocks out a lot of the sound. Now I do hear that water fountain, um, but we can always turn it off in case guests sleep here. You know, if they really want it quiet. That's no problem. It's not connected to the main filter, so the water can still be filtered, even if the waterfalls aren't running. And then we can emerge here for a back forest escape. And, oh, it's actually, the sound here somehow isn't as loud. It's, it's beautiful. It sounds really peaceful. I love it. So they're going to install glass here uh, in the next couple of days so that this will officially be done. So pretty. Nature is so beautiful, right guys? <laughs> guys, look at the iguanas. Adam and Eve are together, admiring the view. Yay, can't wait for all of this to be done. It's been forever. Hi guys, hope you like your new cage, your new enclosure. Adam's going to display. Are you going to display? Let me see, let me see how macho you are. Flex that dewlap. Hey. <laughs> this Awesome enclosure was a success guys. I am so so happy They're enjoying their new home. It seems I might still add a bit more decor in there Maybe some boulders just to round out the more natural look But the more bare bones it is the easier it is to maintain and clean um, So don't want to make it too too complicated in there with like different sticks of different sizes and all of this I think they'll be very happy in there well guys, we have new furniture pieces. Look at this. This is for a plant, I believe. Oh, there's another one there. Sweet. We'll put a plant there. And this, look at this. Whoa, what is this? 
towel rack. Beautiful. For currently, we're gonna use it for my ant room, like next to my spa area, uh, next to my steam room, because I often bring, like I need towels, and I just usually sling them over wherever, but now that I'll have an actual towel rack, that'll make things a lot easier. And you know what? First thing I thought when I saw this was, this would make an awesome parrot perch, <laughs> right? And RJ's like, no, that's expensive. Guys, RJ's gonna show us the yellow room. Oh, so pretty. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, that looks so good. That, oh. It's a mirror with like a place to hang, I guess, towels or jackets or whatever. Wow, a hairy Asian in the yellow room. Oh, it's so zen, even adding the plant there. Is it? Oh, I like it. Slowly coming together. This art piece here, we're gonna move to another place because we actually bought um, a three-piece art piece that goes at the top. That'll be neat. I think all we're missing is maybe shelving, floating shelving here around. We'll see. This room is a work in progress. And of course, you saw we have this that we recently bought from Crate and Barrel. There's a television here and a carpet too. Sweet. That's gonna be really nice. This room is really starting to feel the way I envisioned it. Like back when all of this was just concrete and dust. I, I felt like the yellow room was a zen, relaxing, warm room that really shines at sunset. All right, guys. So we have reached the end of the vlog now. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you've made it to the end, pat on your back. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the support, guys. And honestly, like being part of this journey, you guys following along, it really means a lot to us. Thank you so much for the support. I love reading your comments and getting your feedback and learning from you guys as well. So if you are one of those silent viewers, come out from the darkness, introduce yourself. I'd love to uh, meet you guys, well meet in the comments. Um, but yeah, it means a lot to us that you guys are part of our journey. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this vlog, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. And I know you guys have been doing that. Thank you. And if you haven't yet, do hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabu High Squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Thank you. I will see you guys in the next vlog. Bye. Yay.